have a good time. Put a smile on your face, yeah. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. Mm-hmm. Even brighten your day and help you through the night. Bring you good music. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. And here's your host.
because I know he's going to do it again. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. We thank God for another opportunity to be here and for his glory. Over the course, and I'm here with the, my magnificent producer, Kimmy Kim, with the Re- Elections Radio, and we're glad to be here to bring forth the word of the Lord once more and again. Again, we just thank God for this opportunity. We thank God for how he's moving and, and what he's doing in the, in the land and, and in our lives. We thank God for how he's keeping our minds, for those who are keeping their minds stayed on him. And we thank God for how his promises, his promises in him are yea and amen. Key word is that we got to stay in him, stay in him. My, 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 my. Well, I hope everybody had a fantastic resurrection weekend. That's right. I said resurrection weekend. We're not celebrating no bunny rabbits, no Easter eggs and all that. We're talking about resurrection. We're talking about life-changing events. We're talking about being born again. We're talking about being raised from the dead. We're talking about eternal life. We're talking about having joy. Jesus said that he came to give us life to us more abundantly. So we're, we're, we're thankful. We're glad that we know him in a personal kind of way. We're glad that we know the Father through the Son in that personal kind of way. The Scripture does tell us also that you can't have the Father without the Son. So uh, it's impossible. It's impossible to to know the Father without the Son. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, and no man can come unto the Father except by me. If you come any other way, you're considered to be a thief and a robber. So uh, I don't guess we have any thieves or any robbers. If we do, hey, it's not too late. You can repent, you can believe on the, on the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt be saved. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, I um, I really this this is one of those things I how I just really love the Lord because um the, the list goes on and on and on and on forever, but uh, a lot of times God um uh, it's like to minister in the Word sometimes and I don't know if I don't know if Doctor Kim has experiences a lot but uh, or, <clears throat> or or any time but sometimes it's almost like you go through a mental block. <laughs> It's almost like you go through a mental block up until the time it's time for you to speak, and then it's like at the last minute, the last second, God start giving you stuff that you that you can that you can expound on, that you can that you can um, express, and uh, sometimes even get uh, revelation from even even as you're speaking. That is so awesome because Jesus did tell us that in the self same hour, He'll give us what to say. So uh with that being said, I'm 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 um I'm going to go off into a little bit of a subject there because there's something that I've been facing that that I've um that I've that I've become aware of. I've seen it before, not my first time, uh probably won't be my last time. Uh and I may have talked on it or touched on it a little bit uh before. I'm not surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody you know, came back and said, yeah, well, you've you hit on that before. But um, some other apostle friends of mine, we were doing a podcast this, this past Wednesday, a couple of days ago. And uh, we, we were looking and talking and discussing about the body of Christ. And it came out, or the question came up, Pretty much, as uh, are we are we at a point or are we at a place to are we serving the same God? And uh, I I know this kind of like veers away from where I'm going, but going from but anyway, it was it was the, the reason why the question came up is because you have so many. It's almost like in some cases. Uh, the faith have become like English. So many rules, but yet so many exceptions to the rules. Uh, <clears throat> and the question was, you know, uh, why why is it that some uh, feel like you know I'm I'm born again, 
I'm saved, I'm sanctified. But I still feel like it's okay for me to curse. You know, I'm saved, I'm sanctified, but I still feel like it's okay for me to commit adultery. And I'm I'm saved, I'm sanctified, and I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm saved, I'm sanctified, I'm, I'm full of the Holy Ghost, but I still feel like it's okay for me to um, to engage in homosexual acts. Um, and so that's that's why that's that's how the the the, uh, the question came from and how it came up. And um, <clears throat> you know, it it all it's all something that we have at one time or another may have looked at certain different scriptures and now it's like the scripture is unfolding before our very eyes and we're having this understanding that the word of God is true and it and it is and it has um become alive. And what I mean by that is because I just named out a list of certain things. And uh, even though we, we we name out a certain certain different things, we realize that they're wrong. <clears throat> and even though we realize that they're wrong, there's some who still want to practice it, but and still want to feel um, safe. They they don't want to give up that particular sin. Um, uh, they, it's like it's like they're they're. they're I've heard cherry pick. They cherry pick through certain scriptures to make them feel safe. The ones that bring forth uh, condemnation or, or the ones that, let's say, bring forth conviction, those are the ones we really don't want to listen to or we don't want to hear or we don't want to, um, yeah, we don't want to, we don't want to pay attention to it. Uh, for, for this doing your best, to live upright uh, for this cause, um, some of you are not being invited to some of your family functions, dinners, parties, because they they realize that you are you're not playing with God. You're you're, you're serious about God, and uh, even if you don't say anything, there is an anointing on you that will bring forth conviction. That will make them say, "Well, you know, I don't feel comfortable doing this now because uh, Dr. Kim, Kimmy Kim, just showed up, and uh, so you know, I don't. We don't want to really invite her because you know, you, you, and, and and you know, who knows? This time she might say something when she didn't say nothing the last time. And then you you got a, a flip side of it that where some of them may know your past. You know, I've had it happen to me where some of them knew my past." They knew I loved the dance floor. They knew I loved the women. They knew that I loved the joint. They knew that I that I loved the the the, uh, the beer or the wine or the alcohol. So, um, in order to make themselves feel comfortable, they will offer this to me, knowing that that is my dead man. That dead man is gone. He's buried. He's not functioning no more. So now they're <clears throat> for their comfort. They want to try to stir that up. So um, let's look at let's look at Proverbs. Let's look at Proverbs thirteen fifteen. Now I'm going there for a particular reason. Of course, uh, it's, it's something that you know God has just uh, kind of ushered into my heart there, mainly because um, it's something that. Um, has, has has tried to play a part in my life, or or um, yeah, tried to play a part in my life, or or that I've noticed. Um, you can sometimes say certain things, bringing forth like instruction, and their response is. God is good all the time. God is good all the time. And God is good all the time. But they have no concept that God is a God that chastens those whom he loves. 
I wish I could turn it off. It's going to do its thing for a while anymore, but it's finishing. But that's just the thing that they're um, that they're caught up with. It's a, it's a thing where they do this so that they can feel comfortable in whatever it is that they've been doing. Um, God is good all the time. Yes, he's good. And the thing about it is that he's good even during the time that he's chasing in us. Even during the time that he's chasing in us, he's showing us mercy. And at that time, we may not feel like he's showing us mercy. At that time, it may feel bitter. At that time, it may feel hard. At that time, sometimes in my own um, personal um in my own personal experience, there was times that I was being chastened, and it was so dark and dreary that I didn't know I was being chastened. I thought it was the end of my life <laughs> until until God started letting the rays of hope, the rays of sunshine come through um, in that dark area, that dark place in my life. Let's look at Proverbs. Let's look at Proverbs. Let's look at Proverbs 13. Um, Proverbs 13 and uh, 15. Proverbs 13 and 15. And it says, Good, good understanding give us favor, but the way of a transgressor is hard. Mm-mm-mm. Good understanding give us favor, but the way of a transgressor is hard. Good understanding give us favor. If you understand the things of God, if you understand the ways of God, if you have relationship with God, it will give you favor. Sometimes favor, a lot of times favor, will get you certain things that money cannot buy. Some of some of us we have experienced that growing up um, throughout our childhood and throughout our life. You know, we may have come in certain situations and somebody look at you and say, well, "Wait a minute, hold up, aren't you that Blaston name boy?" Yes, sir. Your 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 mother Margaret Blaston. Yes, sir. Your dad Bill. Blaston? Yes, sir. Oh, I know them. And because of the, the the relationship that my parents may have had with God and the way they conducted themselves, or maybe they may have given a favor, that favor has been passed on to me because we understand what love can do. We understand what God does. We understand that God is love. But with that love or with that understanding, so come for faith. Favor. It's going to come for favor. The flip side of that and the rest of that verse, it says, but the way of transgressors are hard is what baffles me sometimes. And the reason why it baffles me sometimes is because I know of some who know that they're not pleasing God, but yet they want to be pleased. They know they don't. They know they don't make God happy, but yet they want to be made happy. And they don't care if happiness comes through man, boy, girl, chicken, frog, or God. They just want to be happy, but they could care less if they make someone else happy. 
or let's do it this way. They know those who really care for them. They know those who really love them, but yet they put forth their effort, they put forth their energy in someone who don't care about thing about them, and someone who don't even have the love of Christ in them, in order to try to gain their love from him, doing so or trying to gain that love, they transgress and go against the things of God, go against the word of God. And once they do that, they can't figure out why in the world everything now is hard. They can't figure out why things are drying up around me. They can't figure out why it seems like just when I got a breakthrough to go forward, all of a sudden this thing that I thought take me over, now it's drying up. Now it's withering away. Why is it that this this guy or this, this woman came into my life and I thought it was going to be so much joyous and I gave my, my whole heart into it, I gave my all in all into it, and seemed like once I gave my all in all into it, now they've turned their back, now they're looking at someone else, they're skinning and grinning in their face, and here I am all alone. It's because the way of that transgress is hard. And if you are in the flesh more than you are in the spirit of God, you're not going to understand and you're not going to try to figure this thing out and say, well, it's God that's chasing me. It's, it's God that's closing doors on me, doors that I don't need to walk through. He's closing them. You're not going to look at it that way. What you're going to do is because you're so far in the flesh, you're going to try to blame someone in the flesh and say it's because of them. It's because they won't do a certain thing, and because they're not helping me with this is the reason why I can't go. No, it, that's not the reason why. The reason why you can't go any farther is because somewhere along the line, you have transgressed. You have gone against the norm. You've gone against the grain. Anybody that's ever taken a shop, I took it for a little bit, and I don't think I did all that hot in it. But I did learn enough to know that if you're sawing a piece of wood, you do not saw that piece of wood against the grain. You go with the grain of that wood. If you saw it against the grain of the wood, it becomes hard. It's a task that if you're trying to saw that thing against the grain of the wood, most likely you're not going to get a smooth cut. That cuts could be all over. But if you go with the grain of the wood, you can get a smooth cut every single and it's what God was saying to Paul when Paul had been crucifying and killing uh, and martyring the saints. The first thing God told him is, why, why crucify thou me? And do you not know that it is hard to kick against the priest? People don't understand that their life will be a so much, I don't know who I'm talking to, but a lot of people don't understand that it, their life would be a, a whole, just a whole lot easier if they just go along with the program. Some of the old folks used to say, go along in order to get along, or get along in order to go along. I'm, I'm just saying, man, man it, it, it's, a lot of the things that we sometimes go through is because we bring a lot of stuff on ourselves because we don't have any understanding of what it is that God is doing. We don't have to understand as to as to even who God is and 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 what it and what does He mean to us? And I mean, sometimes it's because we 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 not 
spending enough time in the Word. We're not spending enough time with God. Sometimes, you know, you, as I was backing in just a few minutes ago, sometimes we're not careful. And we continuously, like, stay out of the things of God, stay out of church, stay out of the Word, stay out of the presence of God. And we put all this other gook and stuff in into our, our minds, our hearts, and our spirit. We will become dull, dull at hearing, dull at hearing. That's why it's a very dangerous thing to start practicing in any type of sin because the first time, two times, six times, or whatever, you may feel a conviction. Where God is saying, "Look, this, you know this is not right. You you know you need to repent. Even if it takes for you to repent and start start your works all the way back over, you know you need to stop your foolishness. The more we exercise in that area, exercise that that in that in that that sin, that sin becomes a part of us to the point to where." It don't phase us no more. And then once it doesn't phase us anymore, we begin to think, well, it's okay for us to operate in this. It's okay for us to have this. It's okay for us to participate in that. And and <clears throat> sad to say, sometimes for a while, God will allow you to take in that for a while. I've seen some partake in a particular thing, and you know, you 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 try to say a particular thing to them about it, and huh, they tell you, you know, you can take your pistol <laughs> and you do whatever you know what with your pistol. But I know what I'm doing. Blah 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 blah. This, that, and the third. But I'm coming to a place. I have come to a place that I've learned that certain situations after you have warned, after you have prayed, after you have fasted, after you have decreed things, sometimes it comes a place to where if you don't speak, you have to realize that's the time that God will speak for you. I do know how I got here, but <laughs> that is the time that God will speak for you. God will come in, God will validate you, and God will let them know that everything that you have told them before, it was God. He was using you at that time, and they should have listened to you. God will do that. But and, and so the thing about the thing about God is. During the time that you were speaking and during the time that you was pleading and during the time that, that you were trying to get that, that message or that point across to them, they weren't hearing you, trying to hear you. They weren't trying to feel you. But the thing about God is when he speaks, he's better than ear hood. It don't matter who you are. You go listen. You go hear God when God speaks. Because God is not a God that wastes words. When he speaks, things happen. Just like the just like the world that we live in, it was void. It had no fear. God spoke. And when he spoke, the Bible says that the spirit of the Lord moved upon the waters and the earth was formed. When God speaks, your situation totally changes from night to day, from dull to sharp. When God speaks, something will and has to give. Something has to change. But going back to this thing of when we don't do what we should do, 
and how we should operate, how we should honor God and honor the things that God honors. There comes a consequence, and that's where I'm finding out a lot of people are missing it. They, 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 I, we were talking about this on the other podcast. There was a sign, there was a time that the body of Christ was going haywire with the grace message. Grace, 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 grace. Like God won't, like, like God won't bust your head over down to the white meat. God is a God of love. He's a God of mercy. He, he is also a God of wrath. He, he, he and he chases those whom he loves. It's amazing to me that in some people's lives that once the chasing is start, they can't see. They can't understand that it's God trying to get your attention, trying to get you to fall down on your knees, trying to get you to look unto the hill which comes with your help, and your help comes from the Lord. Everything is not the devil. That's coming at you. Sometimes it's sometimes it's both. <laughs> God got you on one end, and the enemy t- trying to tear you up also, because you have separated. Oh my God, because you separated yourself from God. Let's go to Isaiah, Isaiah fifty nine. We'll try to start wrapping this thing up. Isaiah fifty nine. Isaiah 59, and we'll start at 1. I, I, yeah, I was going to start from 1, but we're going to start at verse 1. Verse 1. Then it says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither is his ear heavy that he cannot hear. I love that scripture. There's a lot of times I've quoted that scripture. i prayed that scripture in prayer for those that is lost or was lost. And that's a powerful script that only you can believe God. That yes, God's hand is not shortened that he cannot save. David said, even if I lay, if I made my bed in hell, thou art there. God can and God will save it no matter how far. They've drifted away. If that's God, if that's God chosen one, if God has anointed that, if that's and, and you praying for that was God can and God will turn that life totally around. His ear is not too heavy that he cannot hear your prayer concerning that loved one or hey, let's 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 be real. It's not heavy. Concerning you, Jonah, when Jonah went down in the belly of the whale, he talked about how far that whale took him. And he really felt as though he was in hell. But God heard him even from the belly of the whale. He heard him. From the belly of the well. But this is what catches my attention is in the second verse. He says, But your iniquities, he says, your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. My God. That's the feeling that you, I'm in there. That's the feeling that you get sometimes when you when you have participated in God, well, in particular singing, and, and and God starts chasing you, you feel like he not hearing you. Oh, but he's hearing you. He's hearing you. He's just allowing you to find out what what's more important in your life. Or more likely, he's allowing you to see how important life is to you instead of you chasing that ungodly thing or that ungodly him or that ungodly her. 
chase this, you chase that, and you chase and that 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 bag of weed or that or that bag of coke or that 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 Jameson or that 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 I don't know if they still make Michelob dog, but that used to be my thing. But those things bring forth a separation. It brings forth a dullness of hearing because you've done it for so long you feel like it's not it's not wrong. It's okay. And you start beginning to look at God as though God don't care. He's God. He's he's strong. Well, you know, he's God. God will get over it. I gotta forgive me. But we don't realize that 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 we 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 don't make him happy. We don't realize that we're created in his image and that if someone was treating us the same way we was treating him, we would feel like that person was taking us for granted. We don't feel like or we don't act like or we don't understand that God has feelings the way we have feelings. But all we have to do is pick up the scripture and realize that we was created in his image. What touches us touches God too. That's why he said we have not we have not a high priest who's not touched by our infirmities. The smallest thing that affects us affects God. The the smallest ache, the smallest pain, the smallest disappointment the, the, sm- the smallest ailment, the smallest disease, what affects us affects God. But we run around at times thinking that we can do this with Sue, Sally, Jane, Tom, Dick, and Harry, and it's not going to affect God. It's just going to be something else for God to forgive me with or forgive me about. If we even think about it, a lot of times we don't even think about it. He's gonna have to forgive me before I do this. It's ten times out of ten is after the the fact. It's after we have indulged in something that we come back and say, God, oh my God, forgive me. Then we tell a lie. I ain't gonna do that no more. Then the phone rings and we do it again. <laughs> God help us all. God help us all. I understand more and more sometimes when I look at men and when I look at women and I look at myself, I understand more and more why I'm not God. <laughs> I understand that. I understand that. <laughs> that was a situation and that was dealing and going on in my life, and I and I told God, I was like, God, I'm, this person is just so much. I was like, God, I, I'll be honest with you. I know that you have handled this, and I know you handled this type of stuff 24-7, seven, seven days a week, nonstop. I said, but you are God. You can handle this. I'm, like, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure I, I can't handle this. I I cannot handle this. Someone visited and went and visited a church that I was not familiar with, never been there before. Uh, and this bishop was up preaching, and he stopped in the middle and he began to prophesy to me. He said, "Sir, you can I speak with you?" I said, "Yes." He said, "God said He's gonna send you. He's gonna send you something." And he says, "Let me, let me, let me come on up. Come on front. Come up front." I came up front. And they anointed my hands and said, and he said, God said he's going to send you this. And God said that you can handle what he's sending you. You're his man. He said, you are his man. And I, I, I and I was on like an all time high because it, it was, it was a compliment for God to say, I'm his man. And this is something that he can entrust with me. So he's going to put it in my hands. And it just made me realize that he is God. And if he put it in your hand, 
And if he say you can handle it, can't handle it, by the time he put it in your hand, you're going to be able to handle it. Because he's, he's God like that. I don't even know how I got sidetracked like that, but it's, that's God. But he says right here, he says, but your your iniquities have separated you from God. Your sins have hidden his face from you that he will not hear. For your hands have stained are stained with blood. I'm now reading from the NIV. Your fingers with guilt. Your lips have spoken lies. Sometimes we don't even care what comes out of our mouth. Care what comes out of our mouths. And and being now, you know, now being uh, in the office of an apostle, um, operating from time to time as a prophet, I realize more and more that uh, there's a reason why you have to watch the words that come out of your mouth because there is power in what what comes out of your mouth. There is power that comes out of your mouth. And sometimes God has to put you in a place of training not to allow certain things to come out of your mouth because it's it, – because it's it's almost like weaponry. He he can't allow your words to be so effective sometimes because you'll say the wrong thing to the wrong wrong person and you jack jack them up and jack yourself up. Um, what what do I mean by that? You you don't you just don't give a an M sixteen or AK forty seven or something like that to someone who's nine or ten years old. And say, here, go shoot. You have, you have, you have to, you have to train them. But he said, your your lips have spoken lies, and your tongue mutter wicked things. No one calls for justice, and no one pleads for plead this case with integrity. They rely on empty arguments and speak lies. They conceive trouble. And give birth to evil. Have you ever seen people just look for something? They just look. They just look. They just look at any opportunity just to start quiet and rain today. So let's 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 start trouble. There are people that's like that. They hatch the eggs of vipers and spin spider webs, setting traps. I've seen that happen thousand times in the workplace. I've had them set fire me and then set traps in hopes that I couldn't get my unemployment. They fired me without just cause. And then when I tried to get my unemployment, they set snares trying to stop me from getting my unemployment and got busted right up. Without a law, you just got to come in and bust it right up. But these things, <laughs> they do happen. They do transpire. Cobwebs are unleashed, unleashed for, for clothing. They cannot cover themselves with what they make. The deeds are evil. Deeds and acts of violence are in their hands. Their feet rush to sin. And they are swift to shed innocent blood. I, you know, growing up, I, my, I used to hear my parents say to me, "Don't be so quick to run and see a fight." And I'd be like, "Huh?" Because most of the time, when you see a fight break out, everybody wants, runs to that fight to try to see what's going on with that fight. Mine would tell me, "Don't, don't be so quick to run." to see a fight. Because sometimes it's innocent people around that evil. It's, a lot of times, sometimes it's the innocent people who are around that fight that gets hurt. I remember my dad telling a question, a, a story where he was in school and the two guys got to fight and one of the teachers ran over there to stop it, to break it up. And right when he Went over there to break it up. One of them pulled a knife out and cut him. 
stuck the teacher, I think somewhere across the nose or somewhere along that, and the teacher hollered out, 50 some odd years, never had a scratch. And I come up here to stop this fight, and then I get to it. He wasn't, he wasn't fighting. He was trying to stop the fight. That's why we shouldn't just rush. And then on top of this, it's a rush to shed innocent blood. Thoughts are evil. Thoughts ruined by destruction mark their ways. Their way of peace, they do not know. Listen, when you start breaking, I'm going to really wrap this up. When you start breaking and going against transgression, or when you when you are a transgressor, that's what I'm saying. When you are a transgressor of the things of God, the ways of God, the law of God, peace leave you. I say that again. Will begin to leave you. This is one of the ways that you can know. Without a shadow of a doubt, if you're being chastened by God, if something's not right with God, peace will start leaving you. I don't know how many may be on the side of my voice, but if you can remember the story, the color purple, there was a man who had a who was a who was a preacher. He was a pastor, but he had a he had a woman, he had a daughter that was out there, out there, out there, out there, out there. But the time came that she had to repent and come back home, come back to the father's house. When I say father's house, I mean the, 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 the heavenly father and the daddy's house. But there was a song that went along in there that so much true where it said, I lay awake at night, and then it goes, maybe God is trying to tell you something. Maybe God is trying to tell you something. That's part of my testimony. Right before I gave it all up to God, I couldn't sleep. I could not sleep. Sleep would just leave me. I would get up. I would jog around the block, come back, take a shower, think I'm going to sleep. I've walked, you know, ran this anxiety off, and like clockwork, I went right back up again at the same time. I went from that to trying to drink a Megalo dark to my job, took the shower, same thing, no sleep. And went from that to two Michelob dogs, still no sleep. Then it went from two Michelob dogs to a half a joint and still no sleep. Finally, I found God. And the minute I did that, peace. Even when there was still turmoil, even when there was still hell going on in my house, I still had peace. So if you're under the sound of my voice, and if any of this stuff that I've been saying identifies to you, if you've lost your peace, if you've lost your joy, if things seem to be just so hard, seem like it's about to take place now, and then all of a sudden, boom, it falls apart. Could it be your sins and your iniquities have separated you somewhere from God? Could it be you need to mend your ways? with the Father through the Son. Could it be you need to check your language, bring your language back in the check? Could it, could it be that you need to put that joint down? Could it be that you need to leave that friend that has that, what I'm talking 
are looking for influence on you. Could it be that particular job that you might need to walk away from? I see people saying, "Oh, he not he not going too far now." Well, he, that, there's 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 some elements that come with certain jobs you might need to leave. In order to have a clean slate, in order to, huh, in order to mend your ways with God, you, you know, you we keep hearing that that phrase when we know we're wrong. It's two, it's two phrases, two popular phrases that we hear time and time again when we are a hundred percent wrong, know we wrong. And the first two, one of the first two statements coming out of our mouth is, number one, nobody can judge me but God. I'm telling you, I hear that. Listen, anytime I hear that, the red flag goes up. I'm telling you that now. It goes up because they know they're wrong, but they just don't want nobody to correct them. So they'll say, nobody can judge me but God. No. We don't have to judge you, but we can still say sin is sin. Repent. We can still say that. The second one is, well, God knows my heart. Yes, he knows your heart. He knows your heart is desperately wicked. That's scripture. And no man knows the heart but God is desperately wicked. Wicked. That's what it says. That's what the scripture says. Therefore, because your heart is so jacked up, you need a savior. His name is Jesus. If there's anybody here that's like I said, can identify with anything I've been saying to you tonight, and you want to close the gap, you want to get closer to God. Maybe you want a clean slate, a fresh and a new. If you just repeat this simple prayer with me, it will happen. So all you have to do is repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus, believing that Jesus is your only begotten son, that you gave him to die for my sins. And he died for my sins. And on the third day, you raised him from the dead with all power in his hands. I believe this with my heart. I confess it with my mouth. I ask Jesus to come into my heart. I ask him to make me a new creature in Christ Jesus. And I renounce Satan. He now has no more part in my life. Father, I thank you for hearing me when I pray this prayer of salvation. I have received Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior now. I am a new creature in him. In Jesus' name, I pray. I thank you for saving me. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, if you like more prayer, you can reach me on Facebook, Brian Blassingham, Snapchat, or Instagram. I think I'm now on Clubhouse, too. <laughs> thanks, thanks to Dr. Kimmy Kim. But anyway, you can reach me there. I don't know how, I don't know how club, what quite, Clubhouse quite work yet. I, I think I need to step on there one time or two. But anyway, if you need prayer, hit, hit a brother up. After you get prayer, find a Bible, a Bible-believing based church. Not Not one of tradition, not one of religion, but one that is spirit-filled. Get there. Do all that you can do. Hold fast to the profession of your faith without waiver. But he is faithful who has promised. That's all I have for you tonight, my friends. God bless a, a Good God, I almost did something. Anyway, uh, Dr. Kimmy Kim, will you please take us out? God bless.
Amen. I'm out. Able to stand in the